Hi everyone, thanks for joining. Um, my name's Amanda. I've been a member of the Lakes Legends team for, wow, nearly three years now. Um, so tonight I'll be cooking the beef stroganoff for you, which is definitely a family favourite in our house um, with four kids of varying ages. It can be hard to find a meal that everyone enjoys and beef strog is definitely one of those for us. Um, before Thermomix, I used to buy the packet um, beef stroganoff sauce. I never knew how easy it really was to make from scratch. So um, it's definitely super easy um, and time efficient as well. So what I've done is I've saved it into my weekly planner. So at a couple of presses of a button and I'm here, I've got my beef stroganoff um, and tonight I'll be making it with cabbage. So we'll be steaming the cabbage on the top and using our Varoma. So Michelle mentioned that we're using the Varoma a bit tonight. Um, and that's one of the ways we'll be using it. So instead of having pasta, you have a lower carb option of having it with um, the cabbage, which is really good. Okay, so I'm going to hit start cooking. Um, and it tells me to pop the Varoma onto, into position so I can weigh the cabbage into it, but I've already got that set up ready to go. So I won't need to do that. I'll skip those steps and set it aside. Then I'm going to pop in my onion. So in our house, we like our beef strog with some red onion. So the recipe asks for brown onion, but I've got half red and half brown. So it's great that you can still... Um, tweak the recipes to suit what you like in your household as well so don't feel obliged to do exactly what the recipe says then I need 30 grams of oil so that's weighing that for me in one gram increments so I get to 30 there and hit next and then I'll just be popping the splash guard on instead of the measuring cup because I'll be using the high temp mode and that's going to brown the onions for us rather than sauteing them. Um, so for any of our TM5 owners, um, it just, it actually browns the onions um, instead of just making them that little bit mushier. So for three minutes, um, it's going to pop that into the high temp mode for me and brown those onions. Awesome. I might just find Danny and we'll get started on Danny so we're not um, behind the eight ball, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Awesome. Thanks for that, Amanda. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm here. Thanks, Danny. I think you're Sorry, I've got to off. <laughs> <laughs> All good. All good. Okay. All right. So, what I'm going to be doing tonight is the um, so I'm doing a salmon dish where I'm using the Varoma. Now, we've called this tonight easy and quick family recipes because, and that's why many of us are using the Varoma because it's a way of doing the layered cooking so we get those meals prepared and on the table really quickly. So I've gone into my recipe. I've saved this in my, um, my week, so I'm just going to start, start cooking. And it says to place 1,000 grams or a litre of water in my bowl, which I have done. Now, it is hot water. I put that in a little while ago. And it's got a tablespoon of oil and a teaspoon of salt in there. So what we're going to be doing in that is popping our rice in. Now the rice, it's basmati rice, 250 grams. I've washed it and I've massaged it. And that way by massaging it, it gives you a nice fluffy rice. So I'm going to pop that in. And then I'm going to pop the lid on. Now this is to cook the rice. So it says the water, next, oil, salt, insert the simmering basket, and with the rice, we've got that in. And now it says to insert the Varoma. But before I do that, very quickly, on my Varoma tray, I've just put a sheet of baking paper, which is once they're cut oval from the mix shop. And I'm sure Kyra is going to talk about that as well. But they're really worth having because they're cut in the oval shape for the Varoma. If you don't have that, you might like to use the stainless steel bowl that's... Um, dish that sits in there and you take the measuring cup out but before I do that when you're boiling stock or rice if you're just cooking the rice on its own the little spout on the measuring cup you can see for those that don't have one there's a little point if you direct that point the way you want your steam to go that's um, really helpful because you might have a overhead um, vent or something that you want that steam to go 
But a trick that I want to show you, because every time we do a class, I like to show you. I forgot about if it. If you are in a kitchen that has lower cupboards and your Thermomix is sitting underneath the cupboard and you don't want, if you're doing stock or boiling rice like I'm doing it now, I don't want the steam to damage my cupboard. Get your varoma lid, pop it under the handle, and there you go. If you've got a cupboard here, that's going to direct the steam out. So if I turn that around, that just makes a nice little angle for your steam to go. So that's just a little tip. So on my Verona tray, I've got my salmon and with salt and pepper and some dill. Now the um, bonus that comes with purchasing a Thermomix mix this month is the Meter Plus. Now the Meter Plus is what we call a temperature probe. So I'm going to be sticking this into my fish into the largest part. So I've got a piece in the middle that's quite thick. So all I'm going to do is poke that in, into my fish, and that's going to let me know when it's cooked perfectly. So I've just poked that into the thickest part. Now on my phone, I've got the app. So I don't know if you can really see that, but I'm going to set up cook. It asks me, I won't go into too much detail with this. If you're interested in the meter plus and you want to learn more about it, we can send you some videos that go through how to do it. But anyway, I'm going to set it up. I want to cook some fish, and the fish is salmon, and they are salmon fillets. And it asks me how I want them cooked, medium, medium well, or well. So I'm going to cook them medium well, because salmon should be that little bit uh, still soft in the middle. So start cook. So that's going to just sit on, take my MC off, pop my Varoma up here, which I've got my salmon that's got the dill, salt, and pepper. Pop on my lid and place the salmon. It just tells you exactly what to do. 15 minutes at Verona temperature on speed four. On speed four. Now I'm going to put it on 17 because this is for um, 125 gram fillets. My fillets are 250. So I'm just putting on that extra no. two minutes of cook time. Are you sure? But yes. I need a plus will tell me when they're ready anyway. So that's it. That's it for me. We'll come back when this is all done. Awesome. Thanks. I'll get Amanda back off for her to finish her recipe. Thank you. Looks delicious, Danny. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you. And thank you, Danny. Oh, my goodness. I did not know that trick about putting the lid to direct the steam. So that's Always a tip. <laughs> Woohoo. Um, that's so good. Okay. So. My onions have now browned slightly and I will be popping the lid back on. So it's telling me that I need to take the splash guard off and put my measuring cup back in. And then for three seconds at speed five, it's just going to chop those onions up for me, which is fantastic. I don't have to do it. Okay. And then it tells me to scrape down the sides. So it's just chopped those onions nicely and you can see that they're slightly browned. So just scrape down the sides. And then I'm adding 350 grams of beef fillet steak cut into strips. So I'm cheating with some that's already cut for me. Now, if you wanted to bulk this meal up and add more than the 350 grams, you can do this step and then go take the meat out and then go back and repeat the step with another 350 grams. So if you're cooking for um, a larger family, it's recommended that you only do the 350 grams just so it can brown properly because it is browning and not um, sauteing the meat. So for seven minutes, it's just going to go back into that high temp mode for me and brown the meat. Awesome. Thanks so much, um, Amanda. Over to you now, Kara. Kara's making an omelette. And yes, she can make an omelette in the Thermomix. Which recipe are you actually using um, so I can share the link? I'm actually using the one that just says TM6. So it's not the one that's for two people. This is the bigger version. Awesome. I'll find the recipe. Does that make sense, Michelle? It does. 
it does. Awesome. Well, my name's Kyra. Welcome, everybody. I hope you're learning lots tonight. I know I've learned a tip, just like Amanda did. So thanks, Danny. But um, I've decided to cook the omelette tonight for that very reason. A lot of people don't realise that they can make an omelette in their Thermomix using their Varoma. So I'll get to it. Um, I'll press start cooking. And now it's talking about lining my Varoma tray. So unlike Danny, who had the actual <laughs> cut-out strips, I had none. So I've gone back to my old faithful baking paper and scrunching it up and then popping it into my tray. But when you're using this method, you need to make sure that your vents on each side still can allow for the, for the steam to get up around the dish that's actually in the top. So I've done that already and I'm going to pop that aside. So it's good that Denny had the pre-cut ones because you've seen how you can use those, but I didn't have it. So you've seen both ways now. Um, and I love on our TM6s, it gives you the video on how to do all that. And I've popped that aside. So now I'm going to pop in my six eggs. Beautiful. Next, and I'm going to pop in a pinch of salt and pepper. Yeah, if you really wanted to, you could probably pop in some veggie stock paste at that point just to add a little bit of extra flavour and still get your salt in. Done that. And now we're just going to give that a quick mix up. Doo -doo -doo. Around the speed five. Let's have some space here, might be a second. Alrighty. So now that we've got that mixture all done, um, we're now going to carefully pour this into our tray. So I'll do it and then I'll show you. I may even be able to do it like this. How's that? So we're just going to pour that in. This is a really great nourishing meal that you can clean out your crisper um, and feed the family if need be. Anytime, lunch, breakfast, dinner, you name it. That's why I decided to do it. Now it's told me to clean and dry the mixing bowl, but I'm not too worried about that. And then it asked me to grate my cheese, which I've done previously, just to save some time tonight. All right, so we've done that. It asked me to transfer the, the um, cheese again. And now it's asking me to chop up some onion. So I've got a little bit, little bit of onion. Now this is where you could just use whatever you've got in your crisper. It could be capsicum, it could be whatever you want. Um, so I'm just gonna chop that up. That was done in a second. I love how we can, you know, use our thermomixers and we know that it's doing its job. All right, popped it in. We're going to scrape down the sides a little bit just to get all that onion down the bottom. Beautiful. Next, I'm going to pop in a little bit of olive oil or your oil of choice or butter even. I have used butter before and it's super tasty as well. Oh, gone a little bit over, but as you know, you're a Thermix owner. They're very forgiving. <laughs> and we're just going to cook that onion off now for three minutes. So, Michelle, did you want to go somewhere else or are you happy to stay here or? How are we going, guys? Um, Danny, are you ready or? I'm, I'm still sorry. cooking. Amanda, I'm still sorry. Cooking. Amanda, I meant. No, you're still going? Okay, we might go to um, Nathan quickly while we are waiting. So let me find Nathan. Oh, sorry, Beth, that's you, wrong person. <laughs> Thanks, Nathan. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Nathan. I've been a part of the Lakes Legends um, as a consultant for almost 12 months now. And tonight I'll be making the seared steak and rocket salad on Cookie Doo. Um, this is great just to have um, on a plate as it's pictured on the screen. Probably can't really see it, but it's there. Um, 
or you can have it on wraps. We like to have ours on like tortilla wraps, just wrapped up, um, freshly cooked. So that's a great, great option to have too. So I've done the first step already by sauteing our onions in some oil. So that's all done. I'll just move across to our next step. And we'll just be adding in our beef strips. And a sprig of fresh rosemary. So just the leaves only. And we're going to be using the splash guard like Amanda's using with her stroganoff tonight. So this is a new um, component to the Thermomix. So it only came, came out and available with the TM6. So this is used for the high heat function. So we just pop it on, it just sits over your lid and then the arms will lock it in. Now that's using the high heat function now um, for four minutes. Um, to cook that steak. So it'll start sizzling away. You won't be able to hear it on Zoom. It'll block it out. Um, but it'll sizzle away like it does in a fry pan. And once that's done, we'll just be adding in um, some walnuts. And I've just um, done some research. And if you want nut-free option, you can use pepitas or sunflower seeds. And I'll talk about cookie do as well while this is running. So if you've got maybe a TM5 or a TM31, you might not have cookie do. Um, but there is a 30 day free trial and you can just sign up online. You don't have to have a cook key or anything. And after the 30 day expiry or free trial, you can actually sign up for a subscription and it's only $49 a year. So that is quite good value. And you're able to access over 60,000 recipes. So that is pretty good right around the world as well. So just about, uh, and I'll talk about, sorry, Michelle, I'll just jump on the interest free while we're here. So we've got 24 months interest free available with zip money as well. So that's less than $25 per week. And if you'd like some more information on that, just reach out to your consultant. And we've got quite a few other um, payment options as well. The EC3, the Earn, you can join to earn your machine like I have. So I had a TM5 for about three years and then signed up to earn my TM6 last year. Love it. And you can also obviously... Um, pay a lump sum payment as well. Excellent. Thanks, Nathan. We might keep moving to the others. I can see um, Kyra and Amanda are both ready. So I might just quickly flip to Kyra and then we'll um, swap over to Amanda. Excellent. Over to you, Kyra. Okay. So we're now going to add our ham. So if you didn't have ham, you could use bacon. You could leave the ham out. Again, like I said, just use whatever you've got. So it's just 40 grams, not very much. Now we're going to chop that up. Who's inspired to give an omelette a go? I saw Beth, she's been a Thermomix owner for ages. She's never given it a go. It's something you don't really think about. But we'd love to hear, type it in the chat if this is something that's inspired you to have a go. And you can have this for breakfast, lunch or dinner if on those lazy nights. I'm, it's seriously good. Like it really is really, really good. All right, now we're going to pop in just four cherry tomatoes. But again, if you didn't have cherry tomatoes, you could just add in whatever you had and some button mushrooms. If you didn't like mushrooms, oops, nearly lost one, um, pop in something else. Just like use up your what groceries, uh, what, um, what vegetables you've got in your um, crisper. That's the word I was looking for. Now we're going to chop all that up and cook it off. So that'll cook for another three minutes. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pop it in here to keep it nice and warm. So does everybody know what one of these is? <laughs> it's kind of cute, huh? 
these are our 500 mil thermo servers. So that will actually keep the, the, once this is cooked, it will keep the inner part, like the filling of our omelette hot while we're actually steaming the actual egg part, if that makes sense. But you'll get to see that as we go along. But I just wanted to explain to you that that's what's going to happen. Hey, Google, turn down TV volume to 14. Okay. <laughs> um, so we've got lots of inspo about um, doing this. We've had some people say that they're going to do it while they're camping, which is definitely a great idea. And what have we got? Curious to try the um, omelet. It only takes me a couple of minutes in the fry pan, but, you know, you've got, you've got washing in the fry pan. Um, awesome. Okay, I've got your uh, message, Carleen, so I'll write you down for that as well. Excellent. So over to um, Amanda. I'll just replace the spotlight. There we go. Thanks, Amanda. Okay, thanks, Michelle. So I've browned the meat, so that cooked for seven minutes, and then it said to scrape the bottom of the mixing bowl and around the back, around the blades with the spatula, and in brackets it's got C tips. So what I can do is go into the recipe detail by pressing on the three dots at the top of the screen, and it'll take me into the recipe detail. Um, and down the bottom it has... Uh, it's very important to scrape the bottom of the mixing bowl and around the blades after browning the beef. The caramelisation on the bottom of the bowl needs to be scraped or it may result in burning during the following step. Okay, so so if it ever tells you to refer to the tips, then you can go into the recipe detail um, um, to access those. Oh, it's right, so then I'll just go back up and continue yeah. my recipe. So now I'm going to add my... Yeah. Mushrooms, so 350 no worries. So I've just popped in my mushrooms. I didn't have button ones. I had um, the larger ones, but that's fine. Um, and then next, then I've got, so it's super full. Cool, so I'll just squish them down a little bit, but they'll obviously soften as they cook. So that'll be fine. Um, now I've got 50 grams of tomato paste, which I've also um, which is homemade, which we use for pizza sauce as well. So it's got two uses, which is awesome. I've got, then I'm going to add, it's also got my vegetable stock paste in here that has been cooked from scratch, a tablespoon of paprika and some Dijon mustard. And then I'm going to add 100 grams of white wine. Okay, so it actually asks for meat stock paste as well. I've used the veggie stock, so you don't have to have lots of different stocks if you don't want to. Um, I choose to just use the vegetable stock. So my ground paprika, um, a pinch of salt. I didn't add that because it says to taste and the vegetable stock paste has quite a bit of added salt in it. So I choose not to add any extra. Um, some cayenne pepper, the Dijon mustard, and then this time I'm going to pop the... Aroma on top with my cabbage. So I've got shredded cabbage there. Um, if I wanted to as well bulk up this meal even more, I could use this layer of my Varoma to put some extra vegetables on. So you could have carrots or broccoli or um, whatever it is your family likes. Um, with the cabbage, so I would probably cook some pasta for the kids and then once the cabbage is cooked, I hide a little bit of cabbage in with the, the meal as well. Um, so it's another a good way of getting some hidden veggies in there. Then that's going to cook for 15 minutes. So it's all going to do itself. It's steaming the cabbage in there, cooking my sauce and my meat in there. Um, and then once it's done, like Cara said, I'll pop it into my thermo server to keep it hot. So obviously in a busy household with four kids, um, multitasking and having dinners ready in the afternoon when I can, 
um, and then popping it into the thermo server to keep it, keep it warm until hubby gets home is really awesome. Um, so you can access the thermo service through hosting a cooking experience. Obviously at the moment, depending on where you are, I know we've got some lucky people on here that aren't in lockdown, um, but we can still do our virtual demos as well. So you can access and unlock these host rewards. Um, so feel free to touch base with your consultant about hosting your virtual cooking experience um, so you can access these. And the beauty is as well, whilst my meat was cooking before, um, another multitasking, I was listening to Kyra about her omelette, which sounds awesome, um, and emptying the dishwasher. So I love the, the hands-free cooking um, of the Thermomix. It makes life um, very easy. Lovely. Thanks, Amanda. I was just about to say, you're the queen of bulking up with a family of four kids. So um, <laughs> so there's some great tips. So Rosalind's just asked about, low, she loves the low-carb option. Option. She mm -hmm. said, would you cook the pasta as an option for the straw? For the straw? Oh, yeah, definitely. So you can definitely still cook pasta. So if you don't want to have um, the cabbage, then you would just omit that step and don't put the Varoma on the top. Um, and then, yeah, if you wanted to cook the pasta, you can cook the pasta in a thermo server um, if you have access to one of those, or you can cook the pasta separately in the thermo mixer on the stove whilst the stove's cooking. Yeah. Lovely. Thanks, Amanda. Um, Beth, I will, do you want to see if you can share your screen? Is that okay? And if it doesn't work, I've got the video. So Beth um, is going to show us a dish that she made earlier that we didn't really have time to show tonight. Phone's we, didn't wanna, we didn't want to leave it out. So over to you, Beth. Yeah, well, I think my share screen is working and I think I'm off mute. So this is, I'm going to just show you the Mexican stack. So I'm feeling very relaxed tonight while everyone's busy in their kitchens on my team because um, I've just already um, literally cooked this this afternoon, filmed it as I did it put it in fast motion for you all and um, we've already eaten this for tea tonight. So this is a wonderful meat-free option for an easy midweek dinner. Um, it's also great, you know, for a Friday night. It's kind of like nachos meets lasagna. So um, I'll start playing it and I'll just talk through it as it goes and Michelle, just sing out if there's any issue with it. But there's no sound on it, so I'll just talk over it. So um, the first step, you're just adding in some cheese. So um, with some spring um, onions, you could use shallots. I uh, could use uh, adding in some parsley and some garlic. The flavour in that combo for the top of your Mexican stack, at stack is really nice. I have sometimes not had all those though. So I've just literally only put grated cheese on top. Still tastes fine. And I love you don't have to clean the bowl. You just go ahead, pop your onion in pop chili in so that's just one de-seeded chili that I've put in some more garlic cloves and then it's just going to chop that up in a couple of seconds I think three seconds and you've got all that chopped and then just adding in a tablespoon of olive oil and then I just set that to cook for three minutes but I've jumped ahead so there's that done and now you're adding in um, pretty much a whole capsicum and a couple of zucchinis, about 500 grams of veggies, I think it was, 100 grams of corn, and that's chopping it. If you've got fussy eaters in your household who don't like chunks, you could just chop that a bit finer too. Um, adding in some drained kidney beans. Oops, and I dropped one on the floor. <laughs> and 70 grams of tomato paste going in. And just a can of tomatoes and then I've got a bunch of spices there so that's just cumin coriander paprika some sugar some salt and pepper and that cooks away for 15 minutes so you just walk off I was doing homeschool stuff while um I that cooked stirring in some more corn just to make it chunky again you could leave that out if you've not got um if you've got fussy eaters and then it's just a matter of laying a tortilla two to three spoons of the chili mix in between each layer, put a bit on top and put your cheese on top and pop it in the oven for 15 minutes. And look, I don't think it wins a prize for the prettiest dish, but I promise you it tastes, it's really lovely flavours. 
So I just did that. I'll stop my sharing and I'll just give you a few extra tips. So I just did that um, using my um, rose gold pizza tray. So if you do it on a pizza tray, just pop some baking paper down and uh, make sure it's got a lip on it because obviously that could go places, <laughs> the sauce and stuff, but it stays in really well. Um, it says fresh corn on the recipe, but I just use a can of corn. So it's really easy to have um, the ingredients just in your pantry. You could also use dried beans if you prefer those over canned beans. Um, and then it's a great one to, um, to bulk up with sides. So you could do, oh, oh, or frozen corn as well. You're right, Michelle. Um, so you could add, you could, we had it with sour cream tonight. You could make guacamole, you could serve it with a salad as well. Um, but yeah, the flavours are really great. So I've got an eight-year-old and a five-year-old who had that tonight. And even our baby had a little taste of it. Oh, he's, he's on solids. He's not he's getting bigger. Um, so uh, the flavours are really great for kids. So um, yeah, we, are, and one of my kids is quite fussy and she, she ate it. So I would recommend trying it on your kids. Um, and also the tortillas that I used were gluten-free. So it works great as a gluten-free, meat-free sort of option. And I reckon you could totally um, prep the chili part, pop it away and come back later in the day and stack it up so and, and pop it in the oven when you're ready for dinner. And it smells so good cooking all those flavours. So that's the Mexican stack. I hope that inspired you. Um, and it's almost as quick and easy as that two minute video, I promise. <laughs> Thanks, Beth. And that um, meal also too, if you're busy, you can make that the day before and the flavour enhances really beautifully through that and you can just pop it in the oven to reheat it. So that's a really versatile dish. So thanks, Beth, for sharing. We'll enjoy some that. leftovers tomorrow. Yes, <laughs> definitely. So it's quite big as well and filling. Mm. So who's up next? Cairo, are you ready? I can see almost, you. Almost, almost, almost. Danny, are you ready? I've yep. got a minute and a half to go. Okay, we'll flick over to Danny. Thanks so much, Beth. Thanks, Danny. You're on mute. Okay, sorry. I My uh, meter has told me to remove the salmon, so I've removed the salmon from the Varoma and it's resting. It's still got another minute and a half of resting, but I just wanted to show you that um, it's sitting here in the Varoma. I don't know if you can you see that, and it's just cooking beautifully. Now, what I could have done um, with about eight minutes to go, I could have put some ribbon, carrot and zucchini and things like that in the bowl because at this stage, the Varoma bowl is empty. But I would never normally leave it empty. I'd put something in there. Um, but because we're going to eat this tomorrow night for dinner, I thought I'd save the fresh vegetables till tomorrow. I've taken it off because I want to use the bowl to make the sauce in. So I've just got the Varoma sitting on, instead of taking the lid off, so that the salmon will get cold while it's resting. I've put it on the um, base of the round thermo server. So that fits beautifully with the Varoma and any juices that do come out of the Varoma will sit in that bowl, that um, tray. So that's a really good use for that. A lot of people will stick that in the back of the cupboard and forget about it because it's the bottom part of this. Now in this thermo server, I've got the rice. I'll just show you, beautiful, individual, fluffy, beautifully cooked rice. So I've just got that sitting in the thermo server to keep warm. Go to somebody else and I'll make the, um, you don't want me to make the sauce now, do you, Michelle? Um, if you just wanted to um, just run us through what you're going to do and then we can flip over. Okay, well, I'm and going to make Rebecca, a... And Rebecca just wants to know, are you reheating the salmon tomorrow? Yes, I will. I'll reheat it in the Varoma. So I only cooked it uh, medium, medium well tonight. I like mine cooked well. So what I'm going to do tomorrow is put it back in the Varoma just for, you know, five minutes or so of boiled water, steam it for a couple of minutes just to warm it, and then it'll be fine. Now, this is still telling me that it's still resting with 30 seconds to go. So that's fine. So as you can see, the um, meter, I'm not going to touch it, but the meter is still sitting in that um, piece of salmon. I'm going to make a sauce. I'll, you'll come back to me while I do it if you like because I'm going to cut up some um, onions. I've got everything here ready if you want me to do it. It says empty yeah. and rinse the bowl. I've done that. Yeah. Okay. So do you want me to keep going? Yeah, it's only a couple of minutes, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it says 60 grams of onions. So it's one little onion that I've just quartered. I'll pop that in. One clove of garlic. 
Next, insert the measuring cup. Next, five seconds on speed five. Next, I'll show you. Scrape down the sides. It really sort of, when we're doing these, we tend to rush, but really it's not that stressful when you're cooking it. So that's just cut. I haven't got a light behind, but you can see it's just cut up that onion and garlic. Scrape down the sides, and we're going to go to the next step. which is 10 grams of unsalted butter, and which I didn't get out. Um, so that's just gonna cook off in the butter. I'm just gonna add a little bit of oil. Who loves the chopping of the onions or who doesn't have a Thermomix, who hates chopping onions? We saw how quickly Danny did that without any tears. It was only just a couple of seconds. So this is going to cook off for three minutes on speed one. All right, so you can go to somebody else if you like. Beautiful. And then when I come back with this, I'll talk about the um, bundle offer. Beautiful. So I'll um, put um, Kyra on. Yep, Kyra Thanks, on. Danny. Thank you so much. So what you didn't see was that, yeah, I love, Melanie, I love the fact that I haven't cried for eight years this year. It's my Thermiversary this year, this month. I've had a Thermomix for eight years. So this doesn't look too appetising, I've got to say, with the mushies and everything in there. Um, but what I didn't show you was that once that cooked off, it then asked me to pop in a little bit of spinach. That was just a handful of spinach, about 10 leaves, 12 leaves. I just get a handful and pop that into the bowl and cook that off a little bit. Um, it's not very long at all. Um, and then I popped it into the little tiny little mini thermo server. Yeah, I hate chopping onions, so I'm really happy. So I've actually added this on just for a little bit longer because, let me just stop it, it wasn't quite cooked enough for my liking. It says to add an extra two minutes. Now, as you can see, it's probably, oh, gee, that was clever, Kyra. I need to do the right thing. <laughs> as you can see, that egg's all cooked on there. And probably cooked a little bit too much, but that's okay. That's all right. It's still going to taste good. I promise you. I promise you. So what now we're going to do is, and I'll follow the, there's a little picture there. We're going to pop in just on half this little filling onto the half and just spread that out. See, like I said, you could just have, you know, bacon and cheese. You don't have to have all of the other bits. So, Kyra, is that a video or is that a... No, it's just, it's just a picture. It looks really good yeah. and it's telling you step by step. So, yes, I do have a bit of avocado to put on the top, but to be honest, I'm the only one in my house that has avocado. So I generally put it on the top of my, um, of my um, omelette and then sprinkle some cheese that we grated up earlier, but I did it before the class just to make it a bit quicker for us today. And now this is the bit that I want to show you. So as you can see, can you see on there, you've got your um, filling on one half and then you've got um, the other half. We're going to fold it over. So I hope you can see it. <laughs> Give me a yell if you can't. I'm just going to just edge off the uh, the baking paper just to make sure that it hasn't for some reason st stuck to the paper. And then all you do is you pull this over like so and then go like that. Look at that. Yum. I see that. Looks good. I haven't made an omelette in my Thermomix for so long. I think this is going to be our weekend breakfast. So thanks, Kyra, for the info. <laughs> You're welcome. Now, can I just tell you that I have, like, so this is meant to be, like, the two, I think. It's huge. It's huge. So it could be four, but it's still quite, it's still quite big for just, you know, even the three of us. I've even done it without, like, um, when it's been laid flat, I've even topped it with like cheese and ham or bacon and all that sort of stuff. 
and cheese and just cooked it for a little bit longer. And then you could just cut it up with, using a knife that's not going to damage your, your tray. But I've cut it up that way so it goes further, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you don't want it to be flipped over like this kind of omelette, you could actually do it flat. Does that make sense? It sure does. Yep. <laughs> so that's my tip. I'm going to plate it up for you now so you can, and you'll see a photo at the end. Thanks so much, Kyra. And that's a great the compliment too. If you love um, fried rices, you can be doing the omelette at the same time as you're doing your veggies and boiling your rice at the same time. So it's very um, versatile. So Amanda, are you? Oh, okay. I'm ready? So we'll go to um, Danny and then we'll okay. flick over. Okay. Hi again. So we've just sauteed off the uh, um, onion with the butter and a little bit of olive oil. And I did run to the fridge. It was only 10 grams of butter, so just a tiny little bit. Now it wants me to add 400 grams of cream. Now, of course, if you don't have cream, you can use sour cream or yogurt. Um, so 400 grams. Whoops, I didn't tear it. I wonder if my fingers are wet. There you go. So this is making a lot of sauce. Beautiful. Cream, then uh, two teaspoons of vegetable stock, which this is the vegetable stock that we all make in our Thermomix, so two teaspoons. So therefore I'm not going to put salt in because the salt is in the stock. Okay. Then, one and a half teaspoon or tablespoons of tomato paste or tomato puree. So we just put that in. Try not to, to um, bang any metal spoons on the lip of your bowl because you know you can put dents in it if you really bang, you know, over and over. Two sprigs of fresh dill. So I've got some dill here. Uh, I've got more than two there, so that'll do. Um, and then a pinch of chili flakes. I'm not putting in the chili flakes. Teaspoon of corn flour, so that's going in. Next, set the measuring cup, and that's going to cook off four or five minutes on speed one and a half. All right, so just briefly before Michelle leaves, it goes away, I used the meter plus. It came up that um, I had to rest it, then it told me that the resting was finished and the salmon was ready to serve. So I've still just got that sitting in my aroma. So I'll plate it up shortly once I've done the sauce. But I just wanted to tell you that anybody who is interested in the Thermomix now, if you're already a Thermomix owner and you've got a friend that uh, might be interested, the really good offer at the moment is um, for $49, it's a bundle. You can get the Meta Plus, which is valued at $199. You also get the barbecue pack, which is a box of these um, skewers. So they're mix shop skewers and they're fabulous. They've got little rubber ends on them so you're not going to stab anybody. But the beauty of these is once you put your meat, your onion, your capsicum, whatever, you just slide this down and it pushes the food off the skewer. It also, the way it's shaped, your meat's not going to go twisting round and round on the, on the um, stem of the skewer. So they're fabulous. So for $49, you get the meter plus, the set of your skewers, plus a beautiful barbecue cookbook. Now, the cookbook itself sells for $49, so, or $49.95, I think. So therefore, you're buying the book, you're getting for free the meter plus and the skewers. So they do go hand in hand with the Thermix because the Thermix makes your salads to go with your meats. It also makes all your rubs and your marinades. So they do go hand in hand. Um, the meat plus is something that not only it's not only for men for the barbecue. You do your meat in the aroma, like I just did. You can do it in the air fryer, in the oven, in a smoker, or in the barbecue. So for forty nine dollars, if you purchase the Thermomix this month, that's the offer that you can purchase as an option. Okay. Thanks, Danny. That's fabulous. Um, Amanda, are you ready? Yep. Lovely. I'll just replace you. There we go. Thanks, Amanda. 
Excellent, Danny. That was an awesome infomercial. I think you should get into it. <laughs> <laughs> For forty nine dollars, you can get. No, that was really good. My That's husband has some barbecue skewers for um, Father's Day, so I'm excited to try them out. Um, okay, so I finished this. My cabbage is cooked, so I'm just going to use the lid so it doesn't drip everywhere and set that aside. Then it's asking me to add 100 grams of sour cream. I don't have sour cream. I've just got um, some Greek yogurt. So again, for making it a little bit more low carb again, you can use Greek yogurt. Um, and it's always good to sub whatever you've got in the fridge, especially at the moment when we're trying to limit going to the shop. Um, so you can still tweak recipes. And then it just wants me to stir that in with the aid of the spatula. And I'll just mix that in and then transfer it all into the thermal serving bowl. So I will serve that up and show you what it looks like because at the moment it just looks a bit mushy. Yep. Thanks so much, Amanda. Um, I've just put in the chat, um, our team has actually got a hashtag, which is hashtag legends mixed it. Um, so it's in the chat. If you wanted to search social media, we will be uploading these photos of our creations tonight um, and you can follow us. And if you decide to recreate and you've been inspired by any of these, you could use the hashtag so we can see what you're cooking as well. Uh, Nathan, how are you going there? Are you ready for us? I'm sure you are. <clears throat> Excellent. Thanks, Nathan. All right, so we've finished the high heat um, function to sizzle off our beef. Now, all we need to do is just pop the beef into the bowl that you're going to serve in, but try and re retain as much um, of the liquid that's on the bottom because that's going to form part of the sauce that we're about to make. So I'll just scrape that down. So you keep it in the bowl and you take the meat out, is what you're saying? Yes. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. That looks delicious. I really <laughs> want to make this, Nathan. You've inspired me. Yes, it is delicious. good. Yeah, I've and made it before. Kyra, you inspired me on your <laughs> live with the, um, uh, it was a couple of weeks ago you made the Australian version of the Aussie chow min or something. I made that, and that was great oh, too. It's awesome, hey? <laughs> yep. All right, so I've just got that in our bowl, in our thermo server. So for the sauce, there's just a little bit of juices left in there and some dregs of onion, so I'll just leave that. So I've got all our mixed ingredients in here for our sauce, so it's just 30 grams of walnuts, 20 grams of lime juice, 10 grams of honey, um, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of ground black pepper, plus 20 grams of oil. So I'll just get that straight in. And what was that, sorry, the second last one ingredient? Yep, that was the half a teaspoon of black pepper. Oh, black pepper, sorry. Yeah and then 20 grams of oil so that's what it's looking like all chunky so our next step is we're going to chop it or blend it all up for three seconds on speed five and that's our sauce done. How good's that? Yep. A chunky sauce. Yum. So I'll just scrape this down and then we just pour it straight over our, our salad. I wouldn't have normally had walnuts in my pantry prior to Thermomix, but ever since Thermomix, I've had walnuts. Nathan, all of those ingredients, they're just, it's stuff you've already got in your pantry. That's awesome. Yeah. So this morning um, I had to get a few things. So all I needed to get was the avocado, the meat, and it was something else. But yeah, I had everything else basically. Mm -hmm. 
So that's, um, I'm just going to yeah. stir it through and then plate it up with some avocado as well. Yeah. Just going to talk us quickly through the self clean for those people who don't have a TM6, just to show them. Um, yeah just to show them how it's all done. And Melanie's got a great point. If you don't like walnuts or you can't eat walnuts, you can substitute it out with another nut, whether it's almonds or um, cashews or whatever it may be. Yep, that's right. <clears throat> uh, so I'll just run through the pre-clean function on the Thermomix. So all we need to do is pop a litre of water in so you don't have to weigh it. You can just, might be a bit hard to see with the bowl dirty, but there's markings on the inside of the bowl. So the first one closest to the bottom is the one litre mark. So I'll just fill that up to there, just a sec. So I just cover my blades. How good is the Thermomix? It's, cook, it's washing up while you are having your lunch or your dinner. I love that. Um, yep, so just, just your litre of water and a tiny drop of dishwashing liquid. So we've inspired Kirsty. She's loving it. She's gone home with some inspiration of recipes to try. So that's what this is all about. So I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. And once that's ready to go, you've got four options here, um, like a dough clean, a universal clean, a fat or caramel clean, and a browning clean. I think I'll do the browning clean because I noticed on the bottom of the blade was a uh, Bottom of the bowl was some browning from using the high heat of the onions and the steak. So I'll just turn that round and that'll run for around eight minutes and clean it all off. And all you got to do is tip it out in the sink and you're pretty much ready, ready to use again. Bob's your uncle. Excellent. Yep. Thanks for that, Nathan. We'll go over to Daddy and we'll just quickly show the last um, bits of our cooking. All right. Yeah, so my sauce is complete. All it did was just cook off for that three minutes. I don't think you can see it, but you're better off to watch me pour it. Okay, if you're so going to reheat finish. that, are you going to pour that on your salmon? Beg your pardon? If you're going to eat reheat that tomorrow, are you still going to pour that on your salmon? Well, I want you to see the finished product. Okay. <laughs> We're already going to do it. Otherwise, tomorrow I've got night. my little jug here from the mix shop that will keep it warm. So... I'll reheat this tomorrow because it's cream. I want to be really careful and put it in the fridge, you know, fairly soon. Reheat it tomorrow and I will serve it in the um, little jug here. But, well, otherwise, no, it'll pour someone. Give me a problem. Okay, so that's about three minutes. She's a real legend. Look at her. She's sacrificing her dinner for tomorrow night. Sacrificing my dinner. <laughs> So there, I don't know how you can see that, but I've just got it on a lovely little plate. It's got some rice. Now, had I done um, the other vegetables in the bowl of the varoma, I would have done tonight possibly ribboned carrot and zucchini, and then that would have just sat nicely with the rice and the fish. But how easy was that? You just pop the um, salmon on for 15 minutes. The rice is cooking at the same time. Five minutes to make the sauce, and it's all done. So Danny, that's gourmet, mate. That's gourmet. <laughs> it is. It is. Beautiful. So we'll have some pictures up of that so you can see it with better lighting, but it is definitely. Um, and I'll take some photos. Everyone's yeah, saying it looks it. divine and um, loving all the tips and tricks with the thermo server. Um, so, Amanda, have you played a Jaws up, doll? I think you're the last one to go. And um, Kyra, we've got to do yours too. So, I'll just actually. Um, get Kyra up here too. And hold on. We'll oh, wow. There we go. Okay. We're both up there. Mine looks terrible compared to Danny's. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> Here's some Very meat, nice. mush, and cabbage. Uh, <laughs> no, the photo is not doing it justice. But can I good. just say that Amanda's got the oval thermo server? And um, Nathan put his salad in the white thermo server. I've got my rice in the round thermo server. So any of you folks that are online tonight that are having Thermomix, all you need to do is invite a friend or two to these cooking classes and you can open up to get yourself these thermo servers <laughs> because they are excellent and they go so well with your Thermomix. We can't go without them, can we, ladies? Oh, and and gentlemen. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I've plated mine up if you want to spot my spotlight. Oh, 
definitely. Nathan's not feeling the love, so I've got to find Nathan. <laughs> oh, sorry, on. Nathan. <laughs> okay, there we go. Oh, oh look at that. That's there really good. Oh, and this is put on wraps too. How good's that meal for, uh, like, we're coming into summer now, the warm mm -hmm. months, having that outside in your outdoor area, having a yep. glass of wine while your thermomix is doing your cooking. I love it. Yeah. Um, so we've had some really great comments in the chat, lots of inspiration. We've had somebody say that, um, you know, we're a great team, so we love that. Um, so if anyone is inspired to think about um, joining the team, reach out to your consultant or if you don't have a consultant, let me know and I can put you in touch with someone that can help you. Um, I normally do have a little um, poll, which I forgot to do today. Um, so if anybody has, Melanie answered one of my questions, if anyone's got any ideas of um, some cooking classes, um, any themes that you're interested in, please put it in the chat. So Melanie said she'd love some um, kid-friendly meals for um, fussy eaters, so I'll write that down. Um, or if there's anything else that you need from us, please um, pop that in the chat and we can answer those questions for you. If anyone wants to come off mute before we leave and um, ask any questions or say anything, feel free. If anybody wants information on the meter, we can send a video. We will. Yep. I've already got that written down, Danny. Thank you. Okay. No worries. I'm just the secretary taking the notes to make sure I get all the information out to everybody. So thank you. Um, and Fussy Eater. So I write that down for Melanie and we can look at that as well. We're always looking for inspiration um, of what you guys want as our customers. So that's what this is all about. Kids Snacks, Suve. Can I just thank everybody that showed up tonight? Like we wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you guys. So I'd like to thank you all for showing up because, you know, we love to do this, but it's good to be able to do it to, to you guys and see the, um, that you've been inspired by it. So like Michelle said, if you do make something, hashtag legends, what is that, legends? Legends mixed it. Mixed, mixed it. it. That's right. I had a mind blank then. So, yeah, because, you know, it, we do this for you guys too. Oh, Melody wants a cocktail and Christmas shortcut. That could actually get a bit messy, Melody, if you want to see us <laughs> making lots of cocktails. I'm not too sure if that's really a great one, but it sounds like one that I'd be into. So um, I'm on that one. <laughs> maybe, maybe we could space that one out over December and do one cocktail per Friday night or something. Hey, with this lockdown, it's, it's Christmas every day now. We've just got to make Christmas, you know, make it up. Lots of thumbs up for cocktails. And we've had... Um, That's cocktails one. and finger food coming yes. your way. Catherine. We've lost you, Michelle. Oh. Am I here? Are you there, Michelle? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Can't see you. Oh, that's okay. Um, Melanie <laughs> was from Mildura, Mildura. So lots of wow. different places around Australia, which is great. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks for all the love and all the nice comments. And as I say, if you needed anything just um yell out or pop it in the chat and i will give everybody the recording and um some links to the recipes and different information as well so thank you i'll stop the recording